Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Um, before I start, my name is Dominique, um, and thank you to the Forest Gate Community Garden Team for welcoming me here today. Until very recently, I was a deputy head teacher at a school in Newham. Uh, and I just know that Benjamin Zephaniah's poetry, his thoughts will continue to trickle down onto the next generation. And not only did he inspire our young people, but he also inspired a lot of my teachers uh, throughout his time. So today I'm going to be reading a poem written by a Karina Davis, and this was written in 2004. Benjamin meant that I was seen our existence could not be denied. His way with words was a mighty sword cutting through the vitriol. He gave me courage, a sense of time and space, one of many voices that was seen and heard, provided a sense of pride, a sense of belonging, a sense that we could all belong. If only we could be seen through his eyes. The whole person, our humanity, not reduced to the sum of our parts, but our collectiveness. The thing that he could see could bind us together as one. Thank you very much. I still remember discovering Benjamin Zephaniah's poem, Talking Turkeys, I'm sure some of you will know it, um, when I was in year three at primary school. I was a vegetarian and I cared a lot about animal rights, and it was the first time that I felt like there was someone outside of my immediate family who I could relate to in that sense. I'm sure you will agree Benjamin was an expert at using humour to get across his message. Um, Benjamin experienced racism at primary school, and that, this led him to viewing the cats and the birds and the bees as his friends. He went vegetarian age nine, uh, when he realized that eating meat, that meat was um, animals that had been killed. And then he went vegan age 13, when he discovered the cruelty involved in other animal products, such as milk and eggs. I admire Benjamin hugely for this, because back then going vegan was a totally different thing to going vegan now. I used to be an English teacher in a school called, uh, Trinity School in Canning Town, it's changed now. And uh, and the kids didn't like poetry at all, even though I had to get them to like it. And uh, after weeks of not liking it, I thought, what am I going to do? So I thought, I've heard of this chap called Benjamin Zephaniah, so see if we can get get him along. And uh, by the end of the session, it was uh, you know they loved poetry after that. They were writing bits for me. I, I I can only remember two lines actually, which they uh, really liked in four, although the the whole thing was great. The first was, uh, you know, he had a disrespect for the British establishment and uh, he either had to go and see the royal family or he had to turn it down. I can't remember which it was, but there was a poem he read out, which uh, they always remember the line because the, the, the chorus was, I could not fart in royal company. <laughs> that was his main concern about meeting the Queen. Right? And the kids sort of really realised that you could have rude words in poems. Right? <laughs> not just all this respectable stuff on the GCSE syllabus, but actually it wasn't just rude words, because um, he then read a poem which I remember a hell of a lot. I was an activist instead of the Palestinian, but uh, particularly then for the South African cause. And he wrote a really good poem <coughs> about South Africa, apartheid and so forth. And I just remember the lines, I'm going to... You've got to free South Africa. He really in a big beachy sort of rhythm, which they really liked. They could recognise the passion in his voice. We've got to free South Africa, because too many children going to die down there. Got to free South Africa. Well, I mean, Benjamin, sorry about the uh, pronunciation, nothing else. <laughs> but, um, but they loved that, and they were asking me after that all sorts of questions about um, uh, South Africa and what they could get involved with as well. So I just feel I, I owe him that debt. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, I've got a little story in this poem, actually. I was at um, drama school with Ashley Waters Drama School in Bath. And um, they gave us a book to pick a poem from Benjamin. And it's, it's so funny. I saw, I, I saw this one. It's called 
when my chores is run away. <laughs> and because I do like, I do write a bit upon myself. So I'm just gonna read a bit of it for you. I was walking down Waterfront Street when the chores ran away. I was feeling incomplete, but still my chores would not stay. When I found where they had gone, the peer addressed me rather blunt. And they told me they were sick of being put on back to front. <laughs> I told them I would treat them good and wear them back to front. I promised them protection from a friend who is a Mac. Me trousers did not believe a single word I had to say. And me underpants were laughing when me trousers run away. <laughs> actually, actually, thank you. I got B plus for that. <laughs> I, um, I don't know how much uh, is known <clears throat> about Benjamin's uh, childlessness, but um, um, he was childless and he wrote some poems about that and wrote in the Independent and um, Guardian about it. Um, and um, there is a certain kind of childish community of people who are childish not by choice, uh, of which I'm a member. And uh, there's a, a festival about childlessness up in, in Chester next month. And uh, I've been asked to take part in a, a Benjamin Zephaniah commemoration event with um, to people up there. And <clears throat> I've been asked to write a poem, but um, Benjamin wrote a poem called, I didn't know it, but he wrote a poem called Childless, um, and it goes like this. Strong biceps, firm thighs, big bottom, sexy eyes, fast on the track, strong like a lion, good, king, good kung fu feet and healthy hair, strong triceps, no lie, rhymester, nice guy. A good healthy back, great levels of iron. There must be a baby in there somewhere. There must be a baby in here. So, yeah, right, hope you can hear me. My name is Ivia Scott, and I worked in Newham for the Ethnic Minority Achievement Service as a consultant with Sharon and some of um, about 10 of us who work um, over the time for the service. And um, Benjamin um, was a supporter of our team. He would say to us, you can use any of our poems. And one of the things I did, I asked one of the children to write to him um, so he could come into the school to do an assembly. And within a week, he came in, despite being busy, um, to work with the children. And he spent the whole day in the school. And I think they were all so I'm going to read this tribute from um, Michael Rosen, and he's, he's saying, Benjamin Zephaniah was a giant of fire, a thousand rhymes on his town, dazzling us all, old and young, cutting through the politicians, words conjure and magician. It was his obsession to fight oppression, Rastafarian, egalitarian, invincible, man of principle, Benjamin Zephaniah was a giant of fire. Nice. Uh, right, okay, this is Tony Ash. We were friends in the housing co-ops in Newark. He wanted to form a band to back his poetry. He played bass, I played guitar. He was such a dynamic live performer, powerful, full of energy in his delivery, and he used to play bass at the same time. So we were preparing this serious, heavy political stuff to play to, small pu to the small public at the time. Yet when we rehearsed in the cellar, it was such fun. Sometime we would burst into Louie Louie by Hot Chocolate, Viva Bobby Joe by The Equals, Egyptian Reggae by Jonathan Richman. I played on his first LP, Rasta. He was a very funny guy. In fact, him and his brother Tipper are the two funniest guys I know. 
roll on the floor in painful laughter funny. Tipper played percussion in a later incarnation of the band when we got a bass player so Benjamin could concentrate on poetry delivery. The band split at the end of 1985. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Khadija. Um, I was really pleased I live locally. I didn't know this was here, so this is great to be here. And um, I'm just waving to Chen, Ben's wife, on the, on the camera phone. She wasn't able to make it down here today, but myself and Manju, we both know her, we do some work with her, etc. So she is really, really doing her best to keep Benjamin's legacy alive. That's why if you visit the social media, she's just keeping people updated in a really amazing way. So she just said that I can just kind of let you know some of the things that are going to be happening. We have got the Nubian Jack plaque that's going to be put up in Birmingham on the 25th of September. Um, so we're really pleased that that's going to happen and that's been supported by the Black Writers Guild and, would you believe it, the National Trust. Uh, so it's like nationally, they're going to promote it nationally that so we've got the blue plaque for Benjamin. And as well, but the most important thing is it is going to be a Benjamin Zephaniah Day. Um, it's going to be in April. We're going to let you have more information on that. If you look at his um, social media and all the up-to-date information is going to be there. So um, there's going to be Brunel University are still kind of supporting um, everything with his students, what Benjamin did. It's brilliant because he affected so many of us, like you say, in so many ways. Um, so there's going to be uh, a Benjamin Zephaniah Square named after him at Brunel University. And they're also going to support the Benjamin Zephaniah Day. They're hoping to go national. And as somebody was saying, they don't often mention the veganism. Well, try to get the vegan society involved in that because of course he was the, uh, I think he was the president of that. So to make sure that they are still involved um, and also uh, inquest, because some of you may know as well that his cousin, Mikey Powell was killed in police custody. So he keeps support of that. And one of the ways I know him is because my cousin was also killed in police custody in Scotland. So you kind of form a little club that shouldn't actually exist, <laughs> things like that. Um, and my involvement with Benjamin is because uh, I've known him for about 30 years as a poet. And I, we started working on a book, would you believe it, about 10 years ago. <laughs> Um, so I have to finish the book. <laughs> the book will be finished and the book is basically it's an anthology of, uh, it's a history of black people in Britain through poetry. So it's poets that have already been done but telling the story of black British people in history. So it's Benjamin's idea. He just got me to kind of work with him on it. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing and hopefully that will be out within the next couple of years when it's finished. <laughs> yeah, it's still no, not ten much. Uh, and I actually feel very emotional from this day. I was very privileged to have worked with Benjamin for over 25 years through the shop, but also personally. He was an absolute magnet for children introducing them to poetry, introducing them to reading, and probably some of you here are here because he got you reading. Um, I, as I say, I'm quite emotional and I'm not going to say much more, except that his book signings were legendary. If he'd have known how many books we sold here today, if he'd have known how many books we've sold here today, he would be so thrilled. I do want to just say a couple of words about politics because he was so outspoken on empire that, and um, 20 years ago, Channel 4 filmed in the bookshop how he turned down the OBE, so important, still relevant and even more relevant today. And I also want to say he was such a champion for the Palestinian cause which is more important now than ever before. So thank you for listening, and this is a fantastic day. Thank you. Uh, it's a huge number of people. Thank you so much for coming, and also for the lovely tributes, and uh, listening to him. And I just think it's a terrific thing, so I'm really, really pleased. Um, the reason why I just wanted to speak is that we have a tribute book um, where we're collecting tributes from people who knew him, who were affected by him, who loved his work, all sorts of things. And the
the tribute um, thing to put the collection for writing them are on the table over there. There's things that people can look at. Um, there's also, um, a long time ago, uh, Benjamin was involved with um, a football team, a girls' football team, and I've got a picture on the table of some of the girls who are involved with the football team. And if anyone recognises anybody or uh, they're in the picture themselves, we would love to hear from them and um, we would love a contribution in the book from uh, anyone in the football team. So, And also, if you want to contribute to the book and you want to do it in your own time, you can email any contributions to uh, the garden and we will um, put them in the book, we'll print them off and put them in the book. At the moment, the book has got some wonderful things in, but there are some wonderful people here today, and I would love you to contribute to our book. Thank you all for coming. Thanks. Uh, I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of uh, Benjamin's poem called Introducing High. Let me introduce myself. Hail I, Benjamin Zephaniah. I lack big words and fancy talk, but I have poetic license. And I am willing to fight in the right army. I am very angry and vexed. I was seeking the truth, and they told me to hate that man. I hated that man while they eat the truth. This is no longer so with I, man. Let me introduce myself. I am a warrior for freedom, a giver of love, a dancer of music. I am the victim of sex. <coughs> I am the picture for the frame. Thank you, folks. Um, right.